How's it going? Welcome to another edition of American Picker Man. This is Season 5, Episode 5, and it's uh, April 29th, about quarter to nine in the morning, and it's about 42 degrees. There, there's your update. Uh, last week was a was an okay week. Uh, looks like we got enough for a decent show here today. Like the week before, Friday was a pretty good day, and Saturday was kind of a crappy day, but uh, overall... It was an average weekend, and I've got some average things to show you, some things that I thought were going to be good, and turned out they weren't so good. And Well, let's just get right into it, shall we? Yes, we shall. Here we go. For a dollar, picked up this Bruning. I won't... Yeah, there, there's the picture of it. It's just another lead pointer, kind of like the one I picked up last week, only this is a big desktop model for sharpening those mechanical pencils. Picked up that for a, picked that up for a dollar, worth about 15 or 20 bucks, so not bad. For 25 cents a piece, picked up uh, the insides of this box, which is full of uh, Goebel figurines. These are from the 70s, I think. Uh, Santa. And I'll keep these until Christmas time, of course. Some little uh, horn blower kid. I call him horn blower kid. I don't think that's what it's officially called, though. Snowman. That's probably pretty close to accurate. And a nutcracker. Scary faced nutcracker. Yeah. So, yeah, quarter piece on those, and uh, come Christmas, those will go for about ten to twenty dollars a piece. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm just all perky, and I've only had one cup of coffee. How about that? It may last. It may not. Anyway, next for five dollars, picked up a Mario Kart Wii. Uh, Rayman, which I shouldn't have picked up, and I left that home because I think I'm going to keep it for a while, a Mario Party 8. So five bucks for the three of them. Mario will go for around 20 bucks. This is only good for about five or so. And when the time comes and I sell the Mario Party 8, that'll be worth 20, 25 bucks also. So pretty good. Five bucks. And for the second week in a row, I think it was the second week in a row, anyway, in recent times, this is the second uh, cast iron grenade I've picked up, uh, again, for a dollar. So there's about 10 or 15 dollars right there. Look. For a dollar, I picked up this stack of uh, old Platt and Monk paperbacks. I don't know how old they are. Platt, they're all uh, copyrighted, copywritten, copyrooted. I don't know. They're from the 1930s, say the copyright dates, uh, but I'm not sure when they were actually printed. Anyway, got a nice little black sample, which is always uh, kind of a sought after thing. Um, thing, book. Um, Probably about 20 bucks on that. And the rest of these, uh, only about $5 a piece, but I only paid a buck for the whole work, so not bad. And these are all uh, Native American uh, little books here. Antelope. Let's go through these real quick. Gray Bird. Wat Watlala. Nigalek. Miko. Morning Star. And Leaping Trout. There. So, and they're all in really good shape. Like I said, only about 5 bucks a piece. I've got them in my store for 10 bucks a piece. We're shooting for the moon. We'll see what happens. For three dollars, picked up this uh, knife. I forget what it's called. It's from Germany. It's a uh, Solingen. Sure, I don't know if that's a city or what it is, but it's a good little hunting knife. There, fixed blade. Uh, maybe about twenty bucks on that. Maybe about twenty bucks on that. About twenty. I'm gonna go with twenty. All right. And I don't. I really don't think that's the original uh, sheath, but you know, whatever. All right, for five dollars, picked up uh, a number of pieces of uh, Occupied Japan, like a little tea set. Uh, a number of these cups. They all have the same dragon design. Uh, kind of nice looking with Mount Fuji in the back there. This is a Moriyagi. Uh, it's got the kind of embossed uh, dot painting on the porcelain there. Uh, so I got uh, several cups. I'll just show you a couple of the other pieces here. Dig them out. Creamer and a sugar bowl. Uh, a very nice teapot here. Let's see, can you read it? Occupied Japan. Yes, they all say that more or less. Uh, so that's a pretty festive piece right there. And some saucers to go with the teacups. It's not a complete set, but I'm probably going to piece it out, you know, sell a cup and a saucer and the teapot and probably the creamer and the sugar bowl uh, together. Um, Occupied Japan stuff is really hit or miss. This is a pretty decent set, so I'm hoping overall I'll probably make about 100 120 bucks on it. So not a bad find there. 
This next batch of things, let me have a cup of coffee. I'm losing my mojo here. So this next batch of things, I was really excited when I saw them, and they were only a quarter apiece, so double excited at least. Uh, but then when I looked them up, I found out they weren't as valuable as I had hoped. So uh, this one I actually didn't think was that uh, valuable, but they were a quarter piece, so I took a shot. This is part of the Punt, Pass, and Kick series from the 70s, the big play. Uh, maybe 5 to 10 on that. Now the rest of these are all from the late 20s, early 30s, Cracker Stanton. Uh, baseball stories. These are all sports stories, and I thought because they all have the jackets on them that you know, and they're pretty cool. And I thought they would be fairly collectible, but uh, only around ten bucks a piece on these. So over the line, these are all by Harold M. Sherman, apparently a famous sports writer of the day. Bases full, great covers. Hit and run. This one actually I saw on eBay had sold for twenty-five bucks, so kind of hit or miss on those as well. Uh, captain of the 11, that would be football. It's not a handoff, it's it's a pass. And when you get a pass, sometimes there's interference. So anyway, that whole stack of things, but there's a few other odds and ends in there, but those are the fun ones to look at because they have dust jackets on them. Uh, anyway, that was $3 for the whole lot. I guess if you multiply 5 or 10 by 5 or 10, I don't know, there's maybe, maybe $80 to $100 worth there. I'll just put those in the store, mark them up a little bit, and see what happens, because they're in pretty good shape. Anyway, that's that's that. For a dollar, picked up this uh, Leatherman Skeletool CX. Uh, nice little Leatherman. Uh, hadn't seen one like this before, but then I don't shop around for the Leathermans a whole lot. Uh, so, yeah, it's used a little bit. A little dirty, a little worn, but still, for a dollar, that'll probably go for around 20 bucks. Picked up these four horses, not of the apocalypse, but... Uh, because they're not horsemen. Anyway, they're just little tin or pot metal horses from Japan. Same place I picked up the Occupied Japan teapot set there. They're just a few little horses. Just a few little horses. I don't know what they'll go for. I think they're probably worth about five bucks a piece. So for a buck, it's one of those things that I wonder if I really should have bought because I don't like selling things for five dollars. Now lastly, uh, I got this for three dollars. I'm not sure if the lady just wasn't awake. I feel kind of bad because going through it now, uh, they certainly should have offered her more. But there you have it. I, I said three. You would. Uh, so it's this here. This whole the bowl was not included. That's my bowl. Uh, that's my fruit bowl. Anyway, this whole pile of jewelry was sitting in a bowl just like this. Not like this bowl, but in a pile like this in a different bowl. Am I rambling? Sorry. Anyway, so uh, she's, I said, how much for the jewelry pieces? She said, 50 cents a piece. I said, well, would you take $3 for the works? Because it's a tangled mess, and I don't want to sit here and try and untangle it. I said it more nicely than that. And she said, eh, okay. So she got a bag. We poured it all in the bag, and I brought it here and went through it, and wow. Uh, some decent stuff in here. Decent Elgin watch. I'll show you the, uh, go through a few of this. Obviously, we can't go through it because there's like 100 pieces of stuff in there. Uh... That, by the way, was a, 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 a Seiko. I didn't actually say that. And then uh, I've got, like, I weighed it out. I'm not going to show it all to you, but there was a, easily three ounces of sterling in here. Some interesting pieces. I'll just dig them out here as I can. Go ahead and have a sip of coffee while I load up my hand. Anyway, okay, so here's, you know, some, it's, a, it's a nice uh, ring there. Huh? Uh, a bracelet with some turquoise as well. Sorry, this really isn't showing up very well. Another ring, uh, bracelet, uh, kind of a weird looking brooch. Another uh, ring with some turquoise in it. Another lit ring with some turquoise in it. And a uh, few some earrings. And there were some other earrings in here. Uh, what's this? This is a, another Seiko, but women's watches. They just don't go for as much. Anyway, here's a nice piece here. Hopefully I can keep it from getting tangled. I, you know, this is coral. Uh, I forget what it's called. Stick coral or something like that. Or just, I don't know. Anyway, it's coral. It looks like it's real. Certainly don't know why anybody would make it not real. It's not that attractive. But coral necklaces like this are actually kind of valuable. So if I can, I'm going to probably wind up taking this somewhere to get it appraised. It's worth about a hundred bucks, I think. You know, fifty to a hundred anyway. Another little 
brooch there. Oops, that's upside down. You would have no idea what it is like this, but now you see it like that. Now you know it's a telephone. And what else? Uh, here's an old uh, what's it called? Sarah Coventry brooch there. That's worth about ten bucks. Got to figure out what this is. I mean, I know it's a necklace. Obviously, it's a necklace. It's got uh, sterling, whatever those are called, ferrules. I don't know. Cone ends on the necklace. That's what I call them. But I'm not sure what these beads are. They uh, looks like there's some uh, turquoise in there, but uh, again, I'm going to have to have somebody with more expertise than I have, and that doesn't take much doing to look at that and tell me what exactly that is. And uh, actually, there are a couple. Got a couple of pieces of gold in here. A couple of pieces that I think might be gold that I have to have checked out. Let's see if I can dig them out here. This whole I untangled. I spent a half hour untangling it, put it back in the bowl to show you it, and now it's all tangled up again. So, was that smart? Probably not. There's a little 14 karat gold earring that weighed about two grams, so that's about 20 bucks right there, I believe. This I think is gold, but I have to test it. Um, this missing the jewel, whatever was in there, but I believe that's gold also. So that's it. Pretty good find for three dollars. I feel a little guilty, but uh, I'll, I'm sure I'll get over it. Uh, stick around for updates on a few things that sold last week. Not a great week, but you know, uh, a few things are for you to look at anyway. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Take care. See ya.